So good evening, everybody. I warmly welcome all of you who participated to this lecture, and thank you for your valuable participation. Today, this lecture is about rainforest habitat, which is another very important, interesting, and very attractive habitat with many features. Today's speaker is Anuhas Chamatsara. He is the president of Ornithology Study Group and he is a keen learner of this subject. Also a great bird photographer. Anuhas, now you can start. Yes, thank you, Arusha. Uh, so let me share my screen. Wait. So I guess you can see my screen now. Yes, your screen is visible now. Okay. Uh, so. Good morning, good evening, everyone. So thank you for joining our meeting, as Arusha said. So today, uh, as he said, we're going to do about rainforest. So now let's first see what's a rainforest. So you see, rainforest is an area of dense tree growth and receives and you know gets rain all over the year or most time of it. Uh, rainforest can be seen in almost every continent, in except Antarctica, because you know it's not located in uh, its location is not uh, good for the growth of rainforest so there are two types of rainforests uh, the first one is tropical rainforest and the second one is the temperate rainforest there are some differences between and i'll explain them later in this meeting uh, trees in here are actually very tall you know they can be you know normal height is about 40 meters and sometimes they even get of heights of 100 meters or so uh, so in biodiversity in these areas are very high, not just birds, you can see and other animals too, like mammals, reptiles, insects. So uh, biodiversity is like rich in these forests. So let's first see what's a tropical rainforest. So a tropical rainforest is, uh, you know, a type of rainforest that is in the areas between tropics. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, show you by an illustri illustration later. So these tropical rainforests, uh, they are located near the equator, so they are warmer than temperate rainforests because of that. And, and they also receive higher rainfall because um, you know, most of the you know, cyclones and monsoons occur in, in between the tropics. So rainforests near the tropics get more rainfall. As I told earlier, uh, these rainforests are located in between the tropics. Uh, the two tropics are Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. These are the 23.5 degrees latitudes on the both sides uh, of the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And yes, as I told you earlier, it can be found in every continent except Antarctica and Europe. Yes, Europe doesn't have any tropical rainforest because it's located uh, above the tropics. So trees are quite tall in this uh, rain type of rainforest. They are about 40 meters, 40 to 50 meters. And yes, because the tree tops of these trees form a uh, canopy. Canopy is, you know, something like a roof made by tree branches and leaves. Uh, so many of the world's biodiversity hotspot. Biodiversity hotspot means you know, a place where biodiversity is very rich. Uh, there are many hotspots all around the world. So most of the biodiversity hotspots are tropical rainforests. So you see, this means that tropical rainforests are uh, rich in biodiversity. Actually, tropical rainforests have more biodiversity than the temperate ones because tropical rainforests, you know, uh, they have the ideal conditions, ideal temperature for uh, insects, birds to thrive. So undergrowth is also an undergrowth means, you know, the plants that normally get to a height of five meters or so. So these are some examples for tropical rainforests. So uh, the Amazon rainforest, it's the largest rainforest in the world. It's, you know, larger than some countries even. And uh, it's the other one is the Singaraja rainforest. It's, you know, it's a very famous rainforest in Sri Lanka. Still, 
to my knowledge, it's the largest tropical rainforest in Sri Lanka. And the Kanneli rainforest is also a rainforest in Sri Lanka. The, both of those, these are very biodiversity rich places in the country. So I think you should also go and visit these. So Andaman Island, this is an island located in the Bengal Bay. Uh, it's, uh, belong, it belongs, it belongs to the, Indi it belongs to India. This is also a very rich, uh, you know, it's very biodiversity rich island. Uh, and there's Nicoba Island. It's also located near the Andaman Island. Uh, it's also rich in the biodiversity and if you take this is the congo basin it's also very famous you know rainforest it's located in africa and the state of democratic republic of congo uh, let's go. so this is a map these green colored areas are places where you can find rain tropical rainforest uh, so is, can you see any specialty over here I'm pretty sure that you can see that they are located in a specific region. So wait, wait a minute, I'll draw you, draw and show you what it is. So if you take this blue colored line, uh, it's not perfect, but take this as the equator of the earth. So now the crop, as I told you earlier, these rainforests are located between the tropics. So let me draw the tropics. So I think you can see the red colored lines too. So this red color line in uh, about the tropic in the Northern Hemisphere is called the Tropic of Cancer. And this, uh, the red line below, the equator in the Southern Hemisphere is the Tropic of Capricorn. So you see the most of almost every tropical rainforest in the world is located between these two lines, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. See, that's why they are called tropical uh, rainforests because this zone between these two tropics is called the tropical zone. And yes, almost every tropical rainforest in the world is in this region. There are some going uh, out from the tropics, but not far, you see. So uh, let me stop the animation. So these are the three layers of tropical rainforest. So the un, uh, the one be, uh, most below is one in the most below, uh, closest to the ground is called the herb layer, and it's you know it's very small. Uh, they, they, the trees in that layer doesn't grow much taller than one meter or so. So then we can see the mature layer. So mature layer trees, trees also doesn't grow that tall. Maximally, they'll be at about height of five meters. So this immature layer and herb layer together forms the undergrowth. So I, as I, I told you earlier that undergrowths are very dense in tropical rainforests. So dense means these trees grow near each other without that much space so there's the understory layer only trees that's about uh, 20 to 10 meters tall come in this area and this is the canopy layer i told you that uh, most of the trees in here you know average height is about 40 to 50. so these trees form uh, you know a roof-like structure called the canopy so you see this canopy is very rich with biodiversity. It's actually many, you can see many birds in these canopy areas, but uh, yeah, uh, if you want to photograph one, you, have, you, have to, you should have a very good quality camera because rainforests are very dark because of the canopy blocking the light. So the emergent layer is 
uh, these the trees which in this layer is very tall you know they might be at least 60 meters, 60 or 70 meters tall they're the tallest trees on the um of the rainforest and uh, there's not much trees in the emergent layer because trees normally don't get that tall in a rainforest so uh, only a few trees are in the emergent layer uh, let's go now let's look at uh, temperate rainforests so what's a temperate rainforest temperate rainforest is you know uh it is it's a type of rainforest that is you know located in the temperate zone which is above the tropics and again and between the you know polar regions uh the biodiversity is also a bit low compared uh, they are very cold because of that uh, some even have winter seasons too they have snowfall and if you take their biodiversity it's a bit lower compared to you know uh, tropical rainforest because the climate is cold and sometimes mm, animals doesn't like it you know only animals like bears and reindeers you know animals which have thick fur coats and pet layers live in these here rainforest these rainforests can be found in continents that are located in the temperate zone so uh yeah in that way almost every continent has them except antarctica uh, these rainforests cannot be seen in the tropical area because that area is too hot for these rainforests. Um, these trees have a, even these trees these uh, trees in the temperate rainforest are even taller than the ones we can see in you know tropical rainforests. Um, you see, normally trees like redwood grows in these uh, temperate rainforests, and you know redwood tree is very tall tree. You know they can get at least a height of 100 meters so can you imagine how tall is that uh, so there let me show you some examples for temperate rainforest so yellowstone national park uh, this is a national park in usa uh, it's famed for its geysers rather than the temperate rainforest but it's also a place great place to uh, see birds too because it's a temperate rainforest <clears throat> and there is a Redwood National Park, it's also in USA in the California province, California state. Uh, you could, this is also a great place to see birds. It's also good to see, you know, bears. Monga National Park, this is, all, this is also, uh, this is a national park in Canada. Uh, and Fjordland National Park, this is a national park that you can see in uh, sorry, uh, New Zealand. So where can we find temperate rainforests? So uh, I think you can see these the light green patches. Can you? So these light green patches are temperate rainforests. So you see uh, these uh, rainforests are located in the temperate zone. Let me again do some drawing and show you what's the temperate zone. So if you take the blue line as the equator and uh, this, wait a minute. Sorry. If you take these red lines as the tropics, so if it, the temperate zone is a zone you can see between the tropic and you know this, you know the Arctic Circle. I think you guys know it. I will go and show you. So you see the this is tropic tropic of. Um, and this is the Arctic Circle, so the area between this area is a temperate zone. 
to the climate in these areas are cold. Uh, so most of the you know rain, temperate rainfalls in the northern hemisphere can be seen in this area. Can you see it uh, better? So if you take the temperate zone in the southern hemisphere, if you take the temperate zone in the southern hemisphere, yeah, it's between the Tropic of Capricorn depicted by this red line and this green line, which is the Antarctic Circle. So you see uh, most of the temperate rainforests in the southern hemisphere is also located in this temperate southern hemisphere's temperate zone. So let me clear these annotations. Wait. So let's now look at birds you can see in tropical rainforests. So uh, these are some birds you can see in tropical rainforests. This is the resplendent quetzal. Uh, it's a type, uh, I'll explain you them later. Uh, then this is the scarlet macaw. It's a very famous bird. I think all, everyone of, uh, almost all of you know this bird, scarlet macaw. This is a token toucan. It's also a very famous tropical bird. Now this is a red-faced malco. It's an endemic bird to Sri Lanka. I'm pretty sure you all know it. This is a Ceylon blue magpie. It's also a very beautiful endemic bird of Sri Lanka in the Ceylon whistling thrush. So let's go. So let's see what's, what is the resplendent quetzal. So the resplendent quetzal is, this is the resplendent quetzal, a very beautiful bird. So it's a type of bird in the trogon family. Trogon family is a family of birds, you know, that has long tail feathers and very colorful. Uh, and on, on, can be only seen in, you know, tropical areas, you know, between the tropics. So this is a resplendent quetzal. This is a male resplendent quetzal. The female is much less colorful. So uh, this bird can be only found in uh, Central American region. Central America means, you know, between USA and, you know, between United States, Americas, and uh, uh, South America, that area, you know, countries like uh, El Salvador located in this area. So in that area, you can see this bird. It's a very rare bird. Uh, this is, it's also in the IUCN red list. It's a, uh, you know, IUCN is a institution that uh, goes on checking endangered animals, not just birds, other animals like mammals, fish, reptiles, and so on. So these birds, uh, feed, they are fruit eaters and they also eat insects. So uh, the one reason that this bird is endangered is it's very, you know, a very weak flyer and, you know, it has low defense for against predators. So they are easily preyed by predators in their series. Let's see the other bird. The scarlet macaw. I guess all of you know this bird. Uh, this is a very, Famous, one of the most famous macaw species on the on, Earth, on the world. So, the scarlet macaw is uh, fam is a member of the family called macaws. Macaws is a family of parrots, a group of parrots, large ones. Yeah, they can only be seen. The scarlet macaw can be only be seen in South America, and uh, they can also be seen in Central America, but in low numbers. Uh, this is this birds feed on not just fruits, also insects, and also in nuts. See, their bill, the beaks are specialized for cracking nuts. So these the birds are famous for famous for being as you know beloved pets. Uh, I guess you heard that these parrots can mimic our speech. So this is a toko toucan. Uh, I'm pretty sure you haven't you have seen this bird at least in picture. Uh, so this, the bird is called the Tuko, Toko Tukan. Uh, it's the largest member of the Tukan family. Tukans are birds that are related to New World Barbets. New World Barbets mean Barbets, you know, Cotoroin single. So New World Barbets mean uh, Barbets that you can see in Americas. So these birds, uh, Tukans are related to them. So this is the largest member of the Tukan family. It's also the most famous one. Uh, it's all, only found in South America. These are fruit eaters and they, call, they can also eat nuts too. Uh, these 
birds are you know famed for having be- beaks longer than themselves some birds some toucans have beaks that are even longer than their body so can you imagine how large beaks they do have so there is some misunderstanding that toucans are related to hornbills of the asia region and the african regions i'm pretty sure you've seen hornbills you know can they tie in singular so but actually it's a myth uh, they are no relation at all to these toucans they are they are evolved in the different places and their habitats are also a bit different and, and there are many differences in their their body itself uh, i i'll not going to explain that today because it's going to make this meeting much longer uh, so uh, let's see uh, the other bird the red faced malco i'm pretty sure all of you have seen all of you have known this bird even though you haven't seen it seeing one of the this bird is not easy you know because red faced malco is one of the rarest um endemic birds of sri lanka it's called vataratu malco in singal so it's a bird of the cuckoo family you know so this bird is endemic to sri lanka and it can be seen only in tropical rainforest and in riverine forest of sri lanka you know riverine forest means Uh, dense forest that grow near rivers uh, mostly can be seen in dry zone uh, it's like the tropical rainforest but there are some differences you know the types of trees growing there and there you know their trees nature they are different so this uh, this bird is critically endangered bird uh, it's also uh, listed in the IUCN red list i told you that yeah, about it earlier So let's see the Ceylon blue magpie. So this is one of the famous endemic birds of Sri Lanka, uh, and it's also one of the most beautiful ones too. You see, uh, there's a red, the red beak, the blue, blue wings, and blue tail. Uh, this beautiful, uh, this bird belongs to the family of crows. Yes, I know it's unbelievable, but this is this bird is more related to crows. Uh, it's actually like. a crow that uh, has been painted and given a long tail so uh, this is uh, this bird can be seen in tropical rainforest of sri lanka and also can be seen in montane cloud forest montane cloud forest means uh, you know forests that uh, are located in a, over 900 meters you know areas like cotton plains hagbella nature reserves Uh, this bird is also very en- endangered species is also listed in the IUCN red list i forgot to mention it here sorry for that so let's look at the ceylon whistling thrush so the ceylon whistling thrush is one of the most rarest birds endemic birds of sri lanka uh, you know very hard to see one of them only can be seen in horton plains and in kitulgala nature reserve and even in those places you have to Yeah, give. It's not easy to see them even in these places where it normally lives. So this is considered as one of the most rarest endemic birds of Sri Lanka. So it's more like a black robin, you know, the colorful kitchen single. But there are some differences, as you can see. The whistling thrush is actually have a bluish tint on its body. Uh, black robin doesn't have that, and it's actually much larger than a black robin. You know, size of a minor. Uh, this is this is a critically endangered bird in the IUCN red list so let's see some birds you can see in the temperate one first so this the blue jay the clark's not cracker red cardinal kiwi kakapo so you see this is a blue jay uh, the blue jay is actually a very common bird uh, it's uh, you can't see it in sri lanka or uh, near by countries yet. it can be only seen in north america so it's very beautiful and it's also one of the famous birds not just in north america but all the world uh these birds can be seen in temperate rainforest and scrublands of north america it's a very common bird oh, i also forgot to mention this is also this bird also belongs to the family of crows believably uh, it's also like the blue magpie you know uh, and so it's this clark's not cracker Clark's nutcracker is also a bird found in the eastern part of North America. It's a bird not not just the whole continent of North America, just in the eastern part. 
So this bird's habitats are temperate rainforests. Uh, it's also a common bird in the continent. And this is also a bird that, you know, goes into the family of the cross. So now comes the kiwi. I'm pretty sure you, every one of you know the kiwi, you know, a very small, cute bird you can find in New Zealand. So kiwi is the smallest flight, well, smallest flightless bird. Uh, you know, it's actually <laughs> size of a tennis ball or much a bit larger than tennis ball. Uh, whatever this kiwi is the smallest flightless bird of the world. Uh, it is actually an endemic bird to New Zealand, only can be seen in New Zealand. So uh, these birds are found in dense temperate forest and they live in burrows. Uh, so the, these birds are threatened by introdu introduced species like cats. You see, cats are not a native species of the continent of Australia. So after humans came to the continent, they, int they also introduced cats to, you know, control the problems of rats. And these cats also pose a threat to these birds, not just these uh, I'll also uh, show you another bird that is threatened by the cats. So as these, you know, birds like kiwi have never seen predators like cats before. So because of this, uh, uh, there are numbers are falling in huge numbers, but now there are some conservation going on in New Zealand to save these birds. So this is the bird called Kakapo. Uh, it's also known as the owl parrot because it's, you know, you know, it's like an owl, but it's a, uh, the type of parrot and it's a nocturnal parrot so this owl parrot is the largest parrot not largest sorry the heaviest type of parrot uh, the largest parrot is a um, type of macaw you can see in a tropical rainforest called hyacinth macaw i didn't add it in here uh, so this is the heaviest parrot of the world and this is also one of the most threatened birds in the world too um it's also endemic to the, the island of New Zealand, just like the kiwi. So these guys also live just like the kiwi, you know, uh, burrow in temperate rainforest. This bird is also threatened like the kiwi. As I told you earlier, the kiwi is um, hunted by cats and their numbers are declining. So is this parrot. Oh, I also forgot to mention this parrot cannot fly. It's a flightless parrot, actually. Uh, so this... Uh, Parrot has been hunted by cats and, you know, their numbers have been decreasing rapidly these days, but recently they have started uh, conserving and, you know, they have make, made a, a cat-free nature reserve for these birds so they can thrive in there. So let's see the threats to rainforests. So rainforests have many threats, you know. Uh, the main threat to rainforest is deforestation. Uh, it happens all over the world, not just in Amazon rainforest, but even in Sri Lanka too. So the deforestation is the biggest threat because, you know, when these large trees, uh, canopy layer trees are cut, the undergrowth layer actually doesn't have um, protection and the soil gets eroded and birds uh, like, you know, birds who makes burrows in trees lose their homes and they also lose nesting sites not just birds this is all this is also affected to mammal species mammals reptile reptile fish species of rainforest so um, it's the biggest threat uh, and the other threat is introduction of new species you know if you take an uh, introduction of species that uh, the ecosystem that this the ecosystem prevailing has never seen before like you know Cats in New Zealand because uh, cats uh, uh, cats are not have never been in the uh, continent of Australia because that continent got uh, separated from the other continents uh, before cats evolved. So cannot see cats in these areas. But uh, humans, when they found out the uh, Australian continent, they brought cats there. So because of that, they native species are uh, having a large threat and not just in australia you know in parts of sri lanka too because invasive species are not just animals they also come as plants too you, uh, so invasive plants sometimes take over the native plants because they are better competitors so like that uh, introduction of new species is also you know, not good for these ecosystems so this picture in this 
picture in the left shows uh, a rainforest that is cut down for wood and timber. And the picture in the right show you. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience happened due to the 40 minutes break of this Zoom meeting because we have the basic fun of that Zoom plan. And also, Anuhas, you can continue your presentation. Yeah, actually, it's the last slide of it, so I'll share it again. Yeah. Wait. Uh, so I was talking about the threats to rainforest. Uh, I think you can remember it. Uh, so I was explaining about the pictures at the last. So this picture on the left side is actually uh, shows uh, rainforest being cut down and uh, used to forget timber. So the picture in this right side is actually an owl parrot that has been hunted by a cat. As I told you earlier, that cats are invasive species to New Zealand. Uh, so uh, that's it, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, uh, a special thanks for the board members of the Ornithology Study Group. And most importantly, thank you for joining this meeting. Uh, so thank you and sorry for the inconvenience cause actually we have the basic zoom plan uh, so if you have questions please uh, direct them to the chat box i'll look at yes Anuhas, thank you for your great effort and we took many interesting things from you and also from your presentation we have many questions so the first question is, what are famous rainforests in India and what are the rare animals you can see there? Can you answer that uh, question? Yeah, I'll try. Uh, so if you take rainforests in India, uh, one of the most famous is, you know, Kaziranga National Park and there is Manas National Park. So rare animals, if you take, you know, I mean, uh, it's not about to tell there's not much to tell about birds, but uh, there are mammals, you know, like tigers and Indian rhino, which is a very trend mammal type in the world. Uh, and the, yeah, there's there are other national, there are other types of tropical rainforest in India too. Uh, let me show you one. Anuhas? Yes, yes, wait. Yes, another question. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll answer the first one. Anuhas, your microphone is muted. Yeah, yeah wait a minute. Okay, I'll share the screen and show you that. Uh, uh, Arusha, can you see my screen? Yes, your screen is visible now. So I guess uh, the others can see too. Uh, so these are the top rainforests in India. I told you about uh, earlier that Andaman and Nicobar Islands, they are islands, but they are, they belong to India. So uh, these are the most famous of the rainforest. Uh, the biodiversity is high too. Uh, birds, like, you know, there are some endemic uh, reptile species in it. I don't know that much about that though. Uh, oh, that's, these are the other rainforest Brahma Punta Valley's. Brahmaputra Valley, Evergreen Forest, Northwestern Ghats, 
hindi siya semi evergreen forest and south western ghats actually south western ghats are cloud forest as i've heard it uh, so the other question is yes there's another question can we see rain forest in arabian countries uh, can we see rain forest in arabian countries uh, no you can we can't find rain forest in arabian countries because uh, i'm pretty sure you know that arabian arabic area is uh, pretty much a desert so it's actually goes to the desert habitat not rain forest Okay, uh, there's another question. What is the largest predator found in tropical rainforest? Uh, largest apex predator. Okay, the largest apex predator, if you take overall, I think the largest apex predator is the jaguar. You know, uh, jaguar is a type of big cat in South America. It's the largest cat, uh, big cat type of the South America, Americas. Uh, you know it's pretty much like the leopard of sri lanka but there's some difference because it's larger and it's more bulky than a leopard uh, let me show you a uh, picture of jaguar i'm pretty sure you have seen jaguar before wait a minute okay so So someone is asking that. Wait a minute. Isn't it the Bengali tiger? Wait a minute. Uh, so this is the jaguar. Uh, pretty sure you've seen it before. So wait a minute. I heard someone ask that it's the Bengali tiger. Yeah, Bengal tiger. Uh, so yeah i could yeah it could be the bengal tiger because bengal tiger is a species of subspecies species of tiger and tiger is uh, the largest species of big cats uh yes but i'm don't think it's the largest apex predator in tropical rainforest because bengal tigers they normally live in scrublands and uh you no know, at temperate uh, rainforests uh they are not seen much in tropical rainforest the bengal tiger if you uh, take other species of tiger the sumatran tiger it's found in rainforest uh but the sumatran tiger is actually very small you know this small subspecies of the tiger so uh, i think the jaguar should be the largest one i mean no just my view i think I'm not an expert in mammals, you know. Yes, okay. There's another question. What type of rainforest that we can see in Australia? Australia. That means Australian continent. Australian continent. Type of rainforest? Yes, yes. You mean uh, individual rainforest or the type? Uh, they are asking about the type. The type. Okay, if you take the type, it's temperate rainforest. Uh, because most of the Australia's rainforest are uh, located in, uh, you know, in lower parts of the continent. There are some tropical rainforests in the Papua New Guinea. But they're not, uh, you know, very large. And I think there's another question asking, what is the rarest bird found in Sri Lankan rainforests? So rarest bird in Sri Lankan rainforest, I would say, is the white-faced starling, uh, because it's uh, it's uh, shown in books and you know research papers as the rare, you know, most critically endangered bird in Sri Lanka. So I guess it should be the uh, white-faced starling. So let me show you the white-faced starling. It's it's endemic to Sri Lanka. Uh, white face starling in single means Vata uh, uh, Yeah. So let me show you a white face starling. I don't have pictures of this. So I'll show you from internet. Uh, so this is the white face starling. 
this is the most endangered uh, rainforest bird species of Sri Lanka. So, stop this, yeah. So, are there any more questions? Yes, Anwas, there's another question there. Um, what are the threats to the existence of rainforest in Sri Lanka currently? Yeah, uh, the most, you know, prominent threat is deforestation. It's always is. Uh, because uh, mostly in Sri Lanka, it's mostly deforestation is mostly because of, you know, development processes and for agriculture. So, uh, because of this reforest deforestation, you know, uh, many birds and mammals in birds and reptiles in rainforest of Sri Lanka lose their habitat. So that's, um, you know, the biggest threat to the rainforest of Sri Lanka. There's not much introduced species though. Uh, so the anime, uh, are there any more questions? Uh, yes, there is another question. What happens if habitat of these birds change? You mean if you get destroyed or something? No, no. They are asking about the changing that habitat. Changing, you know. Uh, well, I don't think that would be a good idea, you know. Uh, these, because animals, when, uh, if you take tropical animals, they are used to their habitats. Uh, uh, they don't, uh, because they sometimes they have specific uh, tropical fruits they eat and Sometimes they have special ways of nesting and if you change the habitat, some these features might get excluded. So they, the animals won't like it. So changing the habitats for tropical birds and animals is not good. Are there any more questions? There's no any other question. If you have any question, you can put them into the chat box or you can tell them. I think there are no any questions for you. So let's uh, round up this session. Okay, I think if, it is, if there's no more questions, it's time to wind, wind up uh, this lecture. So uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, this meeting. Uh, and I guess you will also join for uh, future meetings too. You know, next week's meeting will be done by our secretary, Arosha Gimana, and it will be about... Uh, mountain rainforest uh, so i guess you join it join that one too so until then goodbye everyone